Lady in the Dark, one of the most innovative musical plays ever written. A collaboration of three giants of the theater world. The book by Moss Hart, lyrics by Ira Gershwin, and an enchanting score by Kurt Weill. The show debuted on Broadway in 1941 and starred the legendary Gertrude Lawrence at the height of her career. Since that time, Lady in the Dark has attracted some of the world's biggest stars, from Judy Garland to Julie Andrews. Immediate recollections are the beauty of a lovely song by Kurt Weill called My Ship. To this day, I think it is my favorite song of all time. It's a very hard thing to say because I love so many songs, but something about My Ship just hits me in the, in the right place, and the words are so beautiful and the melody is so lovely. Lady in the Dark is one of my very favorite shows, and it's not very well known by the general public, and not even by Kanya Shanti of Musical Theater. It was written in 1941. It was a big smash success. It ran for three seasons. It starred Gertrude Lawrence in one of the great roles of her life. And it was written by a trio of theater artists working at the height of their capabilities. Um, yes, it hasn't been done in New York for almost a quarter of a century. And before that, I think it had been another long while so it's a score that is not frequently heard. Um, any opportunity to hear Kurt Weill is an incredible blessing. I just think he is one of our greatest um, composers and of musical theater in particular and he was always he was never content to do something anybody else was doing. Up until that point you had the sort of brittle witty musical comedies, Rogers and Hart, Cole Porter, and then you had the operettas of Jerome Kern and Sigmund Romberg that were very romantic and set in exotic locales. And there was a feeling like maybe there was something that could combine the best of both. So there was a lot of experimentation going on right around this time. So Lady in the Dark was another attempt by very smart, very probing musical theater artists to try to find something new, a new way of writing a show. And they wrote something unique that was specifically tailored to the story they were telling. The story centers around Liza Elliott, a career-driven, high-powered fashion editor who is all work and no play. Haunted by a troubled childhood, Liza has shielded herself behind the glittery world of haute couture, until one day when she recalls a simple melody from her youth. She can hum the tune, but she can't remember the words. That melody, what is it? What is it? It means something to me, but I can't remember. I can't remember. It started as a play about a woman in crisis who was going through psychoanalysis. And um, then they wrote a score to go with it. And the, the, her in, during her analysis, when she goes into these um, somewhat hypnotic states, she goes into a dream state. And so these, Three different gigantic dreams are what Vile and Gershwin musicalized. I say to me every morning, you've only one life to live. Swim in Jordan, let's let the sun in, and gloom can jump in the rim. No use to be. The Authors were writing in 1940, the world was changing rapidly, Europe had broken out in war. Women were being drafted to take men's place in the workplace. And this show focuses on a self-starter, a woman who's risen to the top of her field and is running a large corporation by herself. She also has a rather complicated romantic situation. It's, it's rather adult and sophisticated. And she is trying to figure out what's going on inside her. And she reveals some childhood traumas that I think we can all relate to and paths a new future for herself, which is not what she expected, and I don't think what's the audience expected. Liza's dreams come alive, emerging into a powerful stage spectacle, a circus menagerie of fantasy and fear, unlocking the secrets of her heart and finally setting her free to love. 
Brilliantly conceived and highly entertaining, this stylish show was both a critical and box office success, and the role of Liza Elliott is a showy star vehicle for any leading lady. It's the Devil Wears Prada meets Moulin Rouge, and it's time to rediscover this sophisticated and timeless masterpiece by three giants of the American theater, Lady in the Dark. Make up, you mustn't make up, or never make up. Everyone with vision comes. 